this is working. It's lovely to be back with you again here in, in Crofton, in St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Parish. I'll be here for about two weeks, I think, so you'll be nice and tired of me by the time that 14 days have passed. This morning, my dear friends, we gather on this 13th week in ordinary time to pray in a particular way for all the intentions that we carry in our hearts this day, but also for Jeff Turner, for whom this Mass is being offered. So we begin as we always do, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we acknowledge our need of the healing and forgiving touch of our God. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Hear this word, O children of Israel, that the Lord pronounces over you, over the whole family that I brought up from the land of Egypt. You alone have I favored, more than all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your crimes. Do two walk together? unless they agree? Does a lion roar in the forest when it has no prey? Does a young lion cry out from its den unless it has seized something? Is a bird brought to earth by a snare when there is no lure in it? Does a snare spring up from the ground without catching anything? If the trumpet sounds in the city, Will the people not be frightened? If evil befalls the city, has not the Lord caused it? Indeed, the Lord God does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. The lion roars, who will not be afraid? The Lord God speaks, who will not prophesy? I brought upon you such upheaval as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. You were like a brand plucked from the fire, yet you returned not to me, says the Lord. So now I will deal with you in my own way, O Israel, and since I will deal thus with you, prepare to meet your God, O Israel. The word of the Lord. Lead me in your justice, Lord. Lead me in your justice, Lord. At dawn I bring my plea expectantly before you. For you, O God, delight not in wickedness, nor evil men remains with you. The arrogant may not stand in your sight. Lead me in your justice, Lord. You hate all evildoers. You destroy all who speak falsehood. The bloodthirsty and the deceitful, the Lord abhors. Lead me in your justice, Lord. But I, because of your abundant mercy, will enter your house. I will worship at your holy temple in fear of you, O Lord. Lead me in your justice, Lord. 
Alleluia, alleluia. I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus got into a boat, his disciples followed him. Suddenly, a violent storm came up on the sea so that the boat was being swamped by waves, but he was asleep. They came and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. He said to them, Why are you terrified, O you of little faith? Then he got up, rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was great calm. The men were amazed and said, What sort of man is this, whom even the winds and the sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. So are you expecting a few words? You are. Oh dear, okay. <laughs> Just maybe a, a short, very short reflection on these readings from Scripture that we have just heard. Just to remind ourselves maybe in our hearts and minds before we uh, step into the Word itself. We'll have heard some of these stories from the Gospel many, many times. But each time the gospel is proclaimed in the assembly of the faithful, it is as if we are hearing it for the first time. There's always something new. Pope Francis was saying this in one of his Wednesday audiences recently, that the word is ever active, ever new, ever creative, and always powerful to act on our minds and hearts and souls if we allow it to. So Jesus, this morning, invites us to get into the boat with him, just as he invited his disciples to do on the Sea of Galilee over 2,000 years ago. The boat is one of these ancient images for the church. To travel with Jesus through the storms of life, as it were, and to reach the other shore. The other shore, of course, is, is eternal life. And as we travel, we know this from our own experience, very often we are distressed, upset, disturbed by the events that happen either around us or within us. And there are two things happening here for the disciples this morning. Both around them there is chaos and within them there is the chaos brought about by unholy fear. And unholy fear is something that drags us away from the God who seeks to save us, rather than holy fear, which r makes us run into his arms. And that's why Jesus says, why are you terrified? I'm here. I am with you. Nothing, no one can destroy you because I hold you, I guide you, I bring you on the path, on the voyage, as it were, of life. And this amazes the disciples, just as it very often amazes us as well. Our temptation sometimes is to give in to the fear and the doubt and the worry and the aftermath of disastrous presidential debates and all of this sort of stuff that can really take over if we're not careful. But we have to, each day, I think, as we begin our day, do what the disciples did and start again on that journey of increasing our trust in Jesus, who is always with us and who will not let us go astray. So with all of that in mind, maybe we'll offer our intercessions now to the Lord. I'm sure there's someone to, to lead us in this so we bring all of our intentions now to the Lord, trusting in his goodness and justice. Are you going to?
For the church, may the Father of all mercies grant her members the grace to grow in love and forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear For public authorities, may God be their guide in learning in leading their communities with concern for the common good, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for those in ill health, may the healing power of Jesus bring them relief and consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for this faith community, may the Lord help us live as witnesses to his saving power. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our beloved dead, may they soon enter into the fullness of God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for Jeff Turner, for whom this Mass is offered, and for what or whom should he, we pray for today? Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For, for the recovery of Tom Whalen, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our God, our Father, we thank you for the gift of faith that allows us to make these prayers with great trust and confidence in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, May we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. And may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, Grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, 
almighty and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you've set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the clergy, and all who serve your holy people. Remember your servant, Jeff Turner, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with, with Saint Elizabeth Ann Seton and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. So at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And we offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring us to judgment and condemnation. Through your loving mercy, be for us protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep each of us safe for eternal life. Amen.
sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Thank you, God, for the little things that often come our way, the things we take for granted and don't mention when we pray, the unexpected courtesy, the thoughtful, kindly deed, the hand reached out to help us in times of sudden need. O oh, make us more aware, dear Lord, of little daily graces that come to us in sweet surprise from never dreamed of places. And let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O oh Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Have a wonderful day.